Okay, we'd like to welcome you back to part two of our current event and weekly Bible study for April 26, 2009. We're going to be continuing the study on Disney. And uh, where we left off uh, from this article we were quoting from, Walt Disney liked animals. And his trains, he liked animals in his trains more than people. He had, I guess, toy trains. This author has seen some alters, meaning alter people that have alternate personalities, uh, like MPD, multiple personality d- disorder. And now, again, if, you, if you're diagnosed with MPD in today's society, which is very common, or schizophrenia, what does that mean? Well, it means you're deficient in Prozac. You're deficient in vitamin Prozac, you know? Or maybe it's vitamin Paxil. But that's the way they approach it. Oh, you've got this MPD. You need this drug. You need this mind-altering drug. And again, that whole teaching on pharmacia that I did gets into this. Uh, But again, please understand, these pharmacia mind-altering drugs that alter brain chemistry actually allow more demonic infestation. If you're MPD, you've got demonic issues. And, and even if you're a born-again Christian, you can still have demonic issues, okay? It's not like you get born again. And the devil never bothers you again, ever in your life. He just leaves you alone because he's so afraid of you. It's not how it goes. In fact, you're more of a target. Okay, so, again, please uh, bear that in mind. But these altars... Um, He goes on to say, then another example is that over the years, this author has discovered that many of the exclusive restaurants that are meticulous in every detail are tied in with the mind control and criminal activities of the elite. Remember, the elite want to always be the ones that present themselves with a really nice candy-coated veneer. All of the families of the Illuminati, all the heads of state, all the governmental people, they all walk around, they always have suits on, and they always look real nice, and they always present themselves in the best possible light in the public. They have their nice big mansions and their fancy cars and all of that stuff, but inwardly they are nothing but ravening ravening wolves, white sepulchers full of dead men's bones. And they are of their father the devil, and of his works they will do. So, just, you know, when, just because something has a nice veneer doesn't mean anything. And then he goes on to say, dirty money is keeping the places looking sparkling clean. So, what it is. Well, Disney worked very hard at maintaining a great image for himself and his company. An example of this is how he exploded in rage and wrote in an angry memo when, when Disney was a character, when a Disney character was placed in a beer ad. So Walt just came unglued, you know. And people would see that and say, oh, he's such an upright, moral man. Look at the conviction. I mean, just something like a Disney character being placed in a beer ad. Look how crazy he goes. He has to be squeaky clean. That's all the devil has to do to get you to think that, that, you know, he's a good guy. He'll do that all day long. The memo mentioned Thomas. uh, The memo mentioned in... Okay, this this was mentioned in Walt Disney, an American hero. And it was written by a guy named Bob Thomas. And it was on page 7, and the book was released in 1994. Okay? So, again, this is, was a, a Walt Disney, an American original. Meaning that this was a book written by Hypernian. Hypernian Press is the one that put it out. Remember, Hypernian Press is a subsidiary of Disney. <laughs> so, it would be like, you know, it would be like somebody evil and having their their public uh, image relations man come in and writing a book about that evil person. Well, of course, it's going to be presented in a very positive light, okay? So, and then he goes on to say, he had a personal image builder, his name was Joe Reddy, who worked full-time to build Walt Disney's image. Joe Reddy was a cigar-smoking Irishman who loved the Catholic College Notre Dame's football team. He was also publicly an agent for Shirley Temple. But the Disney deception entails far more than Joe Reddy's decade of image making and Walt's own abilities to create good images of himself, just as with Billy Graham. Now, again, I've done a whole teaching on Billy Graham. If you think he's some 
wonderful person. Please reference the study. Because the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Well, I don't care what you say. He goes in stadiums and he leads all those people to the Lord and all this other stuff. Well, yeah, there's also another side to that. And you really need to get both sides before you you uh, render too much of it. And anybody at that level in today's day and age has been compromised. The, 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 the elitists, the establishment, do not let you get to that level unless they're behind you. And that's what's hard for a lot of people to wrap their mind around. So, at that point, though, at some point in Walt's career, the entire Illuminati threw their weight behind promoting Walt Disney. Ronald Reagan and Walt Disney were good friends and both cut from the same die in many ways. Both men were high-ranking Freemasons. Both came from socialist backgrounds. Ronald Reagan's mother was Eleanor Roosevelt, was Eleanor Roosevelt's best friend. And Walt's dad was a socialist leader. Walt Disney's dad was a socialist leader. Okay? Walt always generously supported Ronald Reagan's campaigns, and in turn, Reagan did political favors for Walt as governor of California. For instance, Disney's Mineral King Mountain Resort needed an access route through the Sequoia National Park at a time when there was lots of congressional pressure to preserve the latest, the last strands of redwoods. Governor Reagan got his friend Disney his road through the park. You know, you wash my hand, I'll wash yours type of thing. Reagan served as the emissary for the opening day of Disneyland, July 17, 1990. He returned with the Illuminati TV host Art Linkletter for the 35th anniversary. Ronald Reagan and Art Linkletter both um, promoted Disney publicly. Sammy Davis Jr., who was a member of the First Church of Satan, actually the Church of Satan, this is Anton LaVey's church. He was. I've seen pictures of him with Anton LaVey. Sammy Davis Jr. was. Uh, Shane Mansfield was also. Anyway, Sammy Davis Jr., <coughs> member of the uh, Church of Satan, and Frank Sinatra were driving the uh, pint-sized Disney ears at the Autopia ride, evidently on the opening days, telecast. When Disney celebrated... See, they always use all of these people that are so popular in Hollywood and all these things to promote Disney. It's like the... You know, it's, it's just like the place to be. Why do you think they're doing that? When Disney celebrated its 50-year anniversary with a two-hour special on May 20th, 1991, the program included people like occultist Bill Campbell and was named Best of Disney, 50 Years of Magic. 50 Years of Magic. Magic is always associated with witchcraft. Always. There's no such thing as Christian magic either. For the silver anniversary of Disney World in October of 1996, the Clintons were invited to help open 15 months of celebrations. The Bill Clintons. Oh yeah, they're great. The theme of the anniversary celebrations was Remember the Magic. Magic is always associated with witchcraft, with evil. Always has been. But now, we have this wonderful veneer. It's the magic kingdom. Oh, because it has a veneer of wholesomeness, we can associate something that's purely involved with witchcraft with something wholesome, and then that makes the witchcraft wholesome. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Can a clean thing come out of an unclean thing? Not one. That's what the Bible says in Job. Can something clean be brought forth out of something unclean? Can a fountain both yield fresh and salt water? It, no. No. Hillary Rodham Clinton, herself an Illuminati grand dam, is what she's her ranking in the Illuminati, and a mind control programmer, shared with the audience that she and Bill first brought their daughter Chelsea to the Magic Kingdom when she was four. Why? Because they want to set the example. Now, here's another thing to think about. What's happening to you and your kids when you pay money to go into Satan's kingdom? I mean, Walt, the Walt Disney's kingdom, sorry. Could something be happening to you spiritually? 
Could something be happening to you spiritually when you go out and you pay money for their videos and their products and you bring them into your house? I don't know what's going on in an unseen level. But I know the Bible says we battle not against flesh and blood, but against princes, principalities, rulers of wickedness, and high places, powers. And you're telling me nothing's happening to you possibly on a spiritual level? Just like when you go into one of those 501c3 churches and you read a perverted Bible. Or if you brought satanic rock things into your house. It's going to affect you spiritually. You don't see it because your spiritual eyes haven't been opened. But if you could, you might you would probably draw back an abject or and flee the evil that you may be participating in, but you don't see it. Why is it that these presidents are so obsessed with you? I mean, I just saw this uh, when they gave out the stimulus checks. Remember that the IRS thing? What was the what was the thing that Bush said to do? Oh, come on, just take that, spend that money, take your kids, take your family to Disney World. It's exactly what he said. He just said it some months ago. Take the money that you're going to get. Instead of saving it, blow it at Disney World. Get it right back to the devil. Kind of um, interesting that that was what he said to do. Especially interesting in light of the study. Organizations that have been actively working for the New World Order for many years gave big awards to Walt Disney in his first early years. As Benai Brith, uh, they gave him the Man of the Year Award to Walt Disney, and uh, also the Chamber of Commerce gave him that, too. In 1936, Walt was given the Chamber of Commerce's annual Outstanding Young Man Award. The establishments Yale and Harvard Universities gave him honorary degrees. Oh, Yale? You mean where they have a skull and bones? Huh, that Bush was a member of, and his dad was a member of, and his great-grandfather, Prescott Bush, was a member of, or his grandfather, Prescott Bush? Yeah. Skull and Bone Society. Huh, John Kerry was a member of it, too, and he ran against Bush in that election? Wow, that's kind of weird. We're all members of the Skull and Bones. Yeah, but Yale gave him an honor, he, they gave him an honorary degree. Walt Disney's biographer, Leonard Mosley, who researched Walt Disney for years, as well as writing books on the DuPonts, who was also a high-level Illuminati family, and the Dulles Brothers, he wrote in his book on Walt Disney, quote, The studio publicly... No, the studio publicity machines in the film colony had, as usual, gone out of their way to persuade me... This was uh, this uh, Leonard Mosley, who was a writer for a powerfully influential British newspaper, to persuade me that this um, city was a, was a city of lawless gods and goddesses, but it was full of clean living and sanit- sanitized stars. Okay, now when he says this city, meaning Disneyland and Disney World, okay, so again, this is kind of written in a, in a disjointed manner, but this Walt Disney biographer, Leonard Mosley, who researched Walt Disney for years, said that he was trying to be persuaded that the cities of Disneyland and Disney World were actually cities of lawless gods and goddesses, but at the same time, they were full of clean living and sanitized stars. White and sepulchers full of dead man's bones, in other words. That's what they were. They were cities, and they still are cities of lawless gods and goddesses. If you had your spiritual eyes open when you went to Walt Disney World or Disneyland or wherever, Epcot or wherever you want to go, you would probably be an abject whore over all of the fallen angelic and demonic activity that is taking place under the guise of wholesomeness. Now, we can't see that. Okay, we haven't had our third eye opened. We don't want to have our third eye open. That's something that only high-level occultists typically have done. There are times in the Bible where, where... like, you know, John and, and these types of, the, uh, the, Revela- the book of Revelation and um, these types of things where they've had their third eye open temporarily. But it's not something where we as Christians can just go around and see into the spirit world. Like a lot of occultists can. You have to be at a very high level to have your third eye open where you can actually see spirits and things like this manifesting. Particularly if you're seeing it all the time. 
In, in other words, it's not something we, we should pursue. But if we could, we would be horrified. Guaranteed. So if we go further, this is a quote from... Let's see here. This is a quote from the book... It looks like Disney World, written by Leonard Mosley, page 10. It was even more of a deodorized world at the Walt Disney Studio, where the publicity men insisted their boss was faultless. He never drank too much, never used a swear word, never lost his temper, never quarreled with his wife or family, never let down a friend, and woed anyone who tried to suggest otherwise. Members of the resident foreign and local press risked their jobs if they dared to write stories inferring Walt Disney could be a domineering, implacable, unforgiving, and unforgiving. The Disney strong arms were capable of exerting heavy pressure on editors and proprietors through the advertising pages against anyone who inferred Walt Disney was not the epitome of a well-scrubbed and benevolent perfection. How sickening. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. That's what the Bible says. And there's no institution in America that is probably more highly esteemed among men than Walt Disney World. And Walt Disney. Disney is perhaps the epitome of the Illuminati's ability to create images. Again, Satan is very good at what he does. Wolves in sheep's clothing. If Satan can appear as an angel of light, it's no marvel that his ministers can appear as ministers of righteousness. Isn't that what Walt Disney appeared as? A minister of righteousness? That doesn't just mean that some false pastor behind a pulpit minister of righteousness. There's other ways ministers of righteousness can be portrayed. And Walt Disney is the quintessential essence of that. But he's of his father the devil, and of his works he will do. It's one of the best deceptions Satan has ever pulled off in the last hundred, well, it hasn't been a hundred years, but. It's one of the best deceptions he's ever pulled off, as, as far as I can see. This study alone is proving that. And it, uh, this goes on to say they have created great images for, for Disney, including Walt Disney, Disney Movie, Disney Amusement Parks. Hey, I went there when I was a kid. I live in Florida. I grew up going to Walt Disney World uh, every probably couple years. Whether, you know, I've been to Epcot, I've been to Disney World, I don't know how many times. I mean, I wasn't obsessive about it. Now, when I found out of all, all this stuff, I stopped going a long time ago. I mean, I've known this for years. But I can remember the feeling when I was a little kid going there. You know, getting on that monorail when you when you first um, get there to the parking lot, and how, just how unbelievable the whole experience was to me as a small child. You know, and the monorail takes you, and you see the castle, and oh my word, it is absolutely, totally, as a child, an enchantment. An enchantment in the Bible is associated with witchcraft. It, charming. That's a word that, that, although in today's context, oh, she's charming. But to charm someone and to enchant someone is to, be, is to put a spell over them. They think they're in this wonderful, utopic-like world. And I can remember those feelings when I was a little kid. And how wonderful it was to be there. And how I wanted just to stay in the hotel. That, you know, anything having to do with Walt Disney World, I wanted to be a part of. You know? And... Um, yeah, I, I, I've spent, I guess, a lot of time there. And uh, that's the only, I think, Epcot and Walt Disney World were the only... We stayed at the hotel once, I remember. It was just amazing. But I was deceived. I was extremely deceived as a little child. And um, me and about, you know, every other kid out there doesn't, you know... But I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home either at, at all, and... Um, but anyway, just, just wanted to throw that in there. Not to endorse it, but just to let you see that it's, it's, a, it's a spell. It really is. So, if we go further, <clears throat> in order to make movies that contain the typical smut of Hollywood sex and violence, 
Disney did a sleight of hand, which is a, like a magic trick, a sleight of hand, and created subsidiaries, which Disney runs and owns and controls, which has allowed them to keep their good, quote, good image, or the veneer, or the facade of a good, good image. In God's eyes, they are an abomination. But in man's eyes, they're highly esteemed, which is an abomination in the sight of God. So, they also never showed, Disney, the public, the hardcore pornography that was made for years in secrecy for the elite. Now, where have we talked about this? Well, just reference back to my teaching I just did on pedophilia. What is one of the things that they do in child, hardcore child pornography? They make, sometimes, snuff films of little Precious children being sexually abused and then mutilated and then killed to satisfy the perverse sexual appetites of typically the elite because they're the only ones that can afford $5,000 or $10,000 per video cassette or DVD to buy this garbage. What better place to do something like this? Just something to think about. Behind Disney's good front lies hardcore porn, snuff films, and white slavery. Illuminati mind control and the seduction of several generations into witchcraft. Disney's involvement in these kinds of things will be explained in this chapter. So I didn't just say that to not cover it, okay? I can't cover this whole thing. There's like 60-some pages here in this one chapter alone. I'm going to try to hit the high points. But if you want to read the whole thing, you can go up online, and I'll have this in PDF in the format. You can also go read Fritz Springmeier's books online. Um, because you can't hardly buy them anywhere because they've all been destroyed by the Illuminati. You can even go up and read his book that he did on the infiltration of all the denominations called Be Wise as Serpents. You can't find these books. If you were able to find... I've seen his books up on the internet go for 1000 to 2000 apiece. Ones that aren't even, don't even, aren't even bound like a book. If you could find Be Wise as Serpents, you'd probably pay ten grand for it. On one of these rare booksellers. And again, it doesn't mean I agree with every single, every, every single little thing Fritz has ever said. But I'm saying the core of the information confirms a lot of other research that's out there to a high degree. So, um, and I, I think that after we've done the, the teaching on pedophilia, hopefully you'll be able to understand that things like this are plausible and that they do happen at the very highest levels of the government and the heads of state and the elite and the people that have the money. The people that have sold their souls to Satan are perverse, warped, twisted people. And nothing, there's nothing that they wouldn't do that, that, that borders on evil or that is evil. There's nothing they wouldn't do. They're of their father the devil. So, Disney's involvement in these kinds of things will be explained in this chapter. Nobody has sold America witchcraft as well as Disney. Think about that. Nobody has sold witchcraft to America as well as Disney. Nobody. See my teaching on witchcraft, the coming one world religion. The Bible says the Antichrist will cause craft to prosper in his hand. He will cause witchcraft to prosper. He will speak dark sentences. The coming one world religion of this world is essentially New Age witchcraft. It's going to be an amalgamation of every other religion that, there, that is on this planet. It's just going to be like the Tower of Babel. When all the people of all the, the race that had come together in order to make that one world religion that they wanted. And God had to split them apart at the Tower of Babel and make them babble in their own languages, confound their own languages so that they could not communicate with one another, so that they could not have that new world order, one world religion that they wanted way back there right after the flood with Nimrod. God didn't let it happen then, but it's going to happen this time. It's what's coming. And everything that we're talking about today, and in all the previous studies, confirms every other thing that I've ever reported on. Not because I'm whatever, some kind of prophet or whatever. It's just, it's just out there. This information's out there. It's just a matter of finding it.
And the Bible predicted it was going to be this way. So, going further, nobody sold America witchcraft as well as Disney. Movie after movie has cleverly brought the occult into the vein of American thought, all under the, the guise of entertainment. For instance, it was Disney that brought us cannibalism and told us that it was the triumph of the human spirit, quote, triumph of the human spirit, which is a direct quote from Disney's touchstone producer, Robert Walt, Robert w- Watts, concerning the Disney's movies, Disney's movie, Alive which features survivors of an airplane crash up in the mountains resorting to cannibalism. Did you ever see this movie? Yeah, they ate each other. They had no choice. They had to remain alive. But see, and it was, I think it was based on a true story. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was. But this movie Alive was, according to Disney, a triumph of the human spirit. Bill, you look kind of yummy to me today. I'm going to eat you, and I'm going to tr- my human spirit is going to triumph as I eat, eat you, as I have you on a sandwich, Bill. I mean, how insane does that sound? Well, that's what, they, that's what they said about this movie. So, under the disguise of entertainment and showing us how triumphant the human spirit was, they subtly promoted cannibalism. Mickey Mouse plays a leading role in The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Talk about that more. And yet, when this author has suggested that Disney movies aren't wholesome, many Christian parents come unglued and have gotten angry. Why? Because it's a spirit. These, quote, Christians have invested time, money. They may have flown halfway across the country to go there. Don't tell me I've lived a lie. Don't you tell me, Scott or Fritz Springmeyer or whoever else is pointing out the truth, that Disney's evil. I've invested my good hard money taking my family there. We've stayed at their campground, in my travel trailer, or, or in their hotels. We've went to their water parks. We've went to Epcot. In fact, we got the whole package where we went to Epcot, Walt Disney World, whatever. What are the ones that they got? Kingdom, Animal Kingdom. They got Animal Kingdom? Yeah. Animal Kingdom, Magic. Ah, who knows? Yeah, we got the full week pass. Don't you? And we got all their movies, too. We got all their paraphernalia. We got all the stuffed animals from Disney and all that other stuff. Don't you tell me that I wasted my money or that I might be bringing something cursed into my house. Well, Galatians 4.16 says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Tell you what, you bring this this subject up to the average Christian and you will become their enemy. Oh well, so be it. My life is not a population. Population. Popularity contest as a Christian. I was thinking of population reduction because we're talking about evil people. But yeah, your your life as a Christian isn't a popularity contest. And, And guaranteed... When you start to get into this type of material, you will alienate you, yourselves to pretty much everybody in the church, including your own family, most of the time. Why do you think Jesus says, Think not that I come to bring peace, but a sword, and a man's foes will be they of his own household, and a daughter will be against his mother, and a father against his son? That's why. You know what's ironic about this is my parents, who are actually unsaved, they accept most of the stuff that the average Christian wouldn't even ever accept. They have more discernment than the average, quote, Christian. And they know exactly where I stand. And I don't get into many arguments with them anymore about any of this stuff, because they've accepted it. They're not saved. They still need to be saved. But it's pitifully ironic that the average Christian is way more blinded than, than some of the people that are out in the world. In some ways. When it comes to stuff like this. Anyway, um, let's go further. The deceptive image that Disney movies are wholesome is a triumph in the Illuminati deception. Parents would be surprised what is slipped into cartoons. In the Disney's Little Mermaid, the castles are made, are male phalluses, and we already talked about that. In one cartoon, Mighty Mouse is shown without comment, clearly snorting cocaine. 
Walt Disney Studios chairman Joe Roth is in charge of Walt Disney as well as its subsidiaries, Touchstone, Miramax, and Hollywood Pictures. Okay, those are some of their subsidiaries, which were all created to camouflage the Disney production of adult films. Disney operates in a clandestine manner regarding the promotion, distribution, and rating of the films produced by their subsidiaries. And I've even got a little picture here of this mer- Little Mermaid with the um, jacket cover as well. Of course, it's in black and white. You can't really make it out near as well. But um, actually, it's really an X-rated jacket cover, so you don't really want to make it out that great, you know? Because it's not even appropriate. That's the, and that's the Little Mermaid. Um, so this guy named Joe Roth oversaw Giz- Disney's subsidiary Hollywood Pictures Evita film. Evita has, its, has as its main star the material girl, Madonna. Oh, you know, Madonna, the one that likes the Kabbalah, you know, high, highest form of, of uh, Jewish witchcraft and mysticism. The one that gave Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera both uh, French kiss with tongue on stage at that music award. Did you see that? Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, you need to go pursue watching that. But she did. Yeah, Madonna, the material girl. Um, he has a lot to say about Madonna. I'm not even going to get into that. In an interview, Madonna says, though, actually, I'm a very good role model. That's what Madonna says about herself. That's like saying, that would be like uh, somebody saying, you know, actually, I'm really humble. <laughs> Once you've said that, you already, you've automatically discounted yourself from being humble. I mean, you can't go around saying, you know, I'm really humble. Oh, yeah, okay. You've just bragged about being humble. How is that? It doesn't work. Okay. But anyway, Madonna fancies herself a good role model. She says, because I say, look, these are my standards. Then she goes on to plug homosexuality, same-sex marriage, and single families in the same interview. But she's a good role model, though. Well, Disney stated that it plans to release an album by Danzig, which is a satanic heavy metal band whose songs contain very dark themes. Disney's press release announces on its Mickey Mouse on its okay, a Disney press release said that, quote, Mickey Mouse is going heavy metal. Disney's album, Black Acid Devil, was due to hit the music stores October 30th, 1996, during Halloween time. According to Disney, this music has no satanic references, though. It's just all neutral. But it does have some dark, gothic, and, quote, sexual themes. That's what Disney admitted to. Glenn Danzig denies that he is a Satanist. So, in other words, Disney was promoting this satanic rock group, Danzig. I vaguely remember this guy. He was totally satanic. But they were promoting him. And the album was called Black Ass the Devil. So, you know... Just a little more uh, information there. Now, Disneyland and Disney World are world famous in the pride of America. Whatever. But that's how they're portrayed. They're also extremely important um, programming centers for the Illuminati to create mind control slaves. Now again, MK Ultra is something our government openly admitted to. They have declassified the CIA documents. So you can deny it all you want to deny it. But they've been declassified, the documents. It's well known that through the operation of Project Paperclip, we brought over the most brilliant Nazi scientists after World War II that we could bring over to Project Paperclip. Many of those scientists and doctors were the ones that were at the death camps that experimented on torture, drugs, and all types of ways that they can control and manipulate people. Hey, they had millions and millions and millions of volunteers. They weren't willing volunteers, but they had no choice. But they had an unlimited access to all of these volunteers, children, men, women, that they could perform 
all these horrific, sadistic tortures and, and things through, all under the guise of science. We brought those same, like Dr. Mengele, we brought those same doctors over through Project Paperclip. We brought the, their Nazi rocket scientists, we brought a lot of their most brilliant minds over to America to work for us afterward. And that spawned a lot of what we're talking about today as well. Um, so, Disneyland is involved with providing a place for rituals, pornography, and other satanic activities in terms of deception. Now, understand, too, Disney, particularly, um, I think all of the Disney complexes, have gigantic, vast, underground cities underneath. All you're seeing is a facade up above. But there's under, vast underground cities underneath Disney World and their other theme parks. Where you can go from one part of the city to the other without even emerging above ground. It's well known. What better place to do these types of things in darkness? Oh, hey, I have this nice little wholesome veneer above me. And all manner of malignity and evil is going on underground. Now, I'm not saying every square inch of the underground this is going on, but there's certain parts that are designated, and what better front? What better front on the planet could you use in this place? Let's see. In, a, in terms of deception, Disney movies and Disney amusement parks rate as one of the best deceptions. According to Deprogram X Illuminati Slaves, the Illuminati in the 1960s needed to shift their programming away from military bases because too much publicity was shined on the military bases. Their goal was to have some place that people from all over the world could come to without raising any suspicions and a place which would be perfect cover for their criminal activities. A better place on the planet. Is this study getting a little more in-depth than you thought it was going to get? <laughs> it's going to get worse. According to a witness, the Illuminati programmers got a big laugh out of using Disneyland as a major Illuminati base for criminal activity. Under the, under the guise of entertaining the world, they carried out money laundering, child slavery laundering, and mind control. Plus pornography. With such huge crowds, it doesn't take much imagination to see how the Illuminati has been able to do sneaky criminal activities right in front of people. Well, they're not really right in front, they're right below. And the public never sees any of it in the middle of all the activity. And again, if all of this wickedness and evilness is going on there, do you see why it would attract so many homosexuals? Well, they're the most debauched, debased sect of society on the planet, according to God and the Word of God. So it kind of makes sense that that's where they would be attracted to. Because evil begets evil. And the more evil that is committed over land, the more it attracts more evil. That's why there's seedy part of towns where you'll see, you know, the lingerie, the, the strip clubs and the bars and the abortion clinics and a lot of, I mean, in my town, that's the way it is. It's in a very tight time uh, area where all of this evil seems to conglomerate. So, um, let's go. Walt Disney Records is the largest children's record label in the world. We haven't even talked about them yet. Disney, through their movies, toys, books, records, has made a tremendous impact on children throughout the world. Their movie, Return to Witch's Mountain, Return to Witch Mountain, I believe, is one of the most powerful witchcraft promotions ever made. That was originally with Jodie Foster, who has been used, who is a lesbian, who has really been used in the top-level deception movies in Hollywood. She doesn't do a lot of movies, if you've ever seen Jodie Foster. They're very selective in how they use her. But, um, she's been used in some serious alien propaganda, Return to Witch Mountain. Now they've got the new Return to Witch Mountain that just came out, which portrays these good aliens coming here. And, you know, bad, it's, it's the whole bad alien against good alien, good witchcraft against bad witchcraft, and that that's our only hope, because Christianity in their eyes isn't even, you know, isn't even anything. But that's how they want, they want Christians to feel that way, that they're the ones that have power. When in actuality, we're the ones that have power 
through the Lord Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved their lives not under the death. That's what Revelation says. They overcame him. Who's him? The Antichrist. So from the time of the Roman Empire, at least if not before, the oligarchical leadership who have been in control of both the mystery religions and the European aristocracy have been known, have known about what they call bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. Now, this is very important what I'm about ready to say. Bread and circus refers to the concept that if the masses of people are given entertainment and food staples, then they are easy to control. Isn't that America? Just entertain them. Give them some sports. Give them their movies. Give them their pornography. Give them all of these distractions that don't, won't amount to a bit of anything when it's all said and done. Give them their food. Actually, poison them through their food in the water. We're doing that, a lot of that. But, if you do all that, they're easy to control. Well, uh, Walt Disney movies have played a key role in providing entertainment for the masses to ensure Illuminati control. Hey, I'm being entertained. Wow, I'm under their spell. I'm so enchanted. And then all of these Dacronian things are going on behind the scenes that you could care less about, that you don't believe because they're not part of your reality. You're letting the reality that the Illuminati and the most evil factions of society want to create for you rule your existence. And you're letting that reality... You're letting the reality they want to create for you happen. Walt Disney's friend, H.G. Wells, who was a high-level Freemason, um, in his book called A Modern Utopia... Now, H.G. Wells was the one that wrote the center... the uh, 30,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Journey to the Center of the Earth, all those. H.G. Wells. Well, that was Walt Disney's good buddy. He wrote the book, A Modern Utopia, that there would be lots of shows, like shows, entertainment shows, in the New World Order. The World Future Society, in a book review in their publication, Future Survey Annual, 1993, describes Disney as, quote, control of commodities such as entertainment and access to commodities translates into control over the people. So if you can control the commodities of entertainment, then you control the people. The postmodern U.S. is a massive rush of disconnected commodities seeking a moment of our attention. That's what this report said. The world of commodities is our soma, and the entertainment is the current form of public disclosure. Walt Disney World spread, which is spread over 27,000 400 acres of Central Florida swamp and scrub forest is most ideologically is the most ideologically important piece of land in the United States. That's a pretty strong statement. Who wrote that? The Future World Society in a book review in their publication Future Survey Annual from 1993. Walt Disney World is the most ideologically important piece of land in the United States. That's what they say. What goes on here is the quintessential essence of the, quote, American way, and is visited by over 30 million people a year. Not only is it the major middle-class pilgrimage center in the United States, but is by far the most important entertainment center in the world. It is clearly Oz, the utopia as a marketing device. Like the Wizard of Oz? It is. Two Disney brothers, Walt, actually his full name was Walter Elias, and Roy O. Disney, have been the center of the creation of the amusement parks in the popular Disney films. In more recent times, two other men, Eisner and Katzenberg, have been made notable at Disney. Eisner and Katzenberg, as well as others, will be discussed later. One of Disney's directors, Victor Salva, was convicted, who was mentioned earlier, he was convicted of molesting a boy and filming one of these sexual molestations. So the guy that wrote, directed Powder, the movie Powder, he actually filmed one of the sexual mol- molestations. But it's okay, it's water under the bridge, we're all pedophiles here at Disney anyway, or most of us are. 
I shouldn't say that because I don't know that. But they do admit up to 40% of the uh, uh, people at Disney, of the 63,000 employees at the time this was written, were uh, homosexuals. So, um, yeah, this is just unbelievable. The impact of Disney Brothers is monumental. Mickey Mouse t-shirts can be seen being worn by natives from all over the world. Disney World and Disneyland are the quest for a large segment of humanity who often esteem theme parks as the highlight of their life. At the time, when I was a little kid, it was the highlight of my life. I admit it. For a kid, or ch- a child, I shouldn't say kid, but a child, I, I know I've said that before, it says, a kid is a, is a little he-goat, or whatever. Oh, okay, okay, I won't call them kids. But as a child, okay, Yes, it was pretty much the highlight of, of a child, of the average child's life. It was for me. You know. But that's, I mean, this is how, this is how I guess, important the subject is. Because it, it, if it's the highlight of your life as a child, it will never, that will burn things into your remembrance. And, and the way that you perceive everything will be heavily, heavily influenced by the times that you've had there. And if it's wicked, then how is that really affecting you on a spiritual level? He goes on to say, what is highly seen among men is an abomination in the sight of God, according to the word of God. The Bible arbitrarily makes this claim, but sadly, research by this author over the years proves that a close examination of Disney and mankind's esteem for Disney things does vindicate this biblical expectation. What is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Couldn't more aptly apply to Disney, is what he's trying to say. In other words, as readers of this article will find out, behind the appearance of wholesomeness of the Disney brothers and their creations lays abominations. Some of the most grotesque aspects of generational occultism the world has ever seen. Disney's magic kingdom has become an American institution that impacts people all over the world, from cradle to grave. That's what we're talking about. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and I'm going to go ahead and do a part three, and because I don't think I'm going to be able to get all this in to this next part. So we're going to go to a part three next. God bless you.